Hello everyone and welcome back to ASFC Chemistry. Today we're looking at how your delta G calculation can be linked to the straight line equation y equals mx plus c. And you can see that I'm using some data that's already up on the screen for you with my axes already done and my line already drawn. The rearrangement is also at the top of the screen at the moment. And in going over this, I'll also hit some of the other points of theory and understanding that you can find in the OCR A specification under module five. So without any further ado, let's get started. So I'm going to be referring to this graph all the way through, but labeling up different parts. I recommend you take screenshots to perhaps save some of the pieces of theory you struggle with the most. First off at the top of the page, you can see my rearrangement of the delta G calculation that I've done to mirror the y equals mx plus c equation. What I've circled up for you are the y and x axis of delta G and temperature with units of kilojoules per mole and Kelvin respectively. As then you can see if they ask you to plot a graph for this or if they ask you to describe what you could do to calculate delta S uh, using a graph, you would then be able to say exactly what the axes would be right at the very start. For the line itself, uh, that's already shown, it represents the plotted points. We'll discuss later in this video what its gradient represents, but also why it crosses the x-axis and what that significance is, and how it seems to disappear suddenly further down the screen. Okay, now here I've labelled up for you the part of all of this I find students struggle with the most. It's how to calculate the entropy change using the graph. The reason I find people struggle with this the most is because the gradient that you would calculate actually represents, as you can see from the rearrangement, minus delta S. This means, for instance, that if the gradient of your line is positive, just like this graph you can see now on the screen, your entropy change would actually be negative. Similarly, if the line of your graph had a negative gradient, then the entropy change for your reaction would be positive. Essentially, you need to know that the gradient represents your minus delta S, but also in the exam, if you are actually calculating your entropy change from the graph, you need to flip the sign on your correctly calculated gradient in order to have the correct entropy change for your reaction. You also need to be mindful that your gradient, your minus delta S, will come out in units of kilojoules per Kelvin per mole because that's how it's represented in the delta G calculation. This next point is a little more straightforward. It's our intercept. The intercept is the point at which the line crosses the y-axis, and it's represented in the equation for a straight line by the letter C. So as you can see above, for our delta G calculation, C is the enthalpy change. And whilst for this graph, we cannot see where the intercept takes place, we can assume that this reaction would be exothermic, as if you were to keep extrapolating the line, you would find that it would be crossing the y-axis at a negative value. What we're looking at here is the significance of the point at which the line crosses the x-axis. This is the temperature at which delta G is zero. So generally speaking, our reaction becomes feasible at this point, at this temperature. Now remember, for a reaction to be feasible, delta G has to be less than or equal to zero. That's for OCRA specification. What this means for our graph is, all the points to the left of the green dot that you can see now, where we can see our temperatures give us a negative delta G, are temperatures at which the reaction is feasible, or we can say spontaneous. Those points on the line which come after the point we've crossed the x-axis are, however, temperatures at which the reaction is not feasible because delta G will be positive. Therefore, the significance of this temperature where we've crossed the x-axis is that it represents the maximum temperature for our reaction to remain feasible. Any higher than this temperature and the delta G is positive. Now here I've got a bonus for you. You'll have noticed that this line for our graph does not actually continue past the point shown at the bottom. That's because after this point the entropy changes and the gradient of the line changes. Can you think why this might be? The answer can be found in the video description. 
Don't forget to like this video, subscribe to our channel, and then click the little bell icon for notifications so that you're the first to know when we post any new content. Until next time though, happy revising.